Hi, this is Natalie at the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche on a beautiful Sunday. It's a little hot out, but this is the time of year for that on, in South Florida. So today I'm going to show you some new finds, some ideas, some progress on my current whips. Well, actually there's one in particular that I've been really working on because I want to get it finished. And I'm going to show you a vintage kit extravaganza, meaning I have a many year collection of vintage Christmas kits and some other, a few others, but mostly Christmas. A lot of these kits, similar kits I'm gonna say, have been done. So I've done these Christmas kits and they're all boxed away now on uh, for, from, with my holiday stuff. My entire tree is actually just only vintage, um, vintage ornaments that I've made and cross-stitched ornaments. So that's it. My entire tree is either vintage or cross-stitch or sequined or some sort of kit. So we're, we're gonna have fun. Anyway, first things first, I'm going to show you my uh, progress on Little House Needleworks Louisa Snow. That is the original sampler. Here is my progress. Looking pretty good, huh? I think. Just to have them side by side. There's a lot of brown up here. I did not realize how much there was. And it's all, um, the name of this is Caterpillar by Classic Color Works. Can't wait to get to the bottom where there's the color. <laughs> anyway, this is on my own dyed linen. I call it striped coffee and tea linen, of course, because it is striped. It's on, uh, I believe, I have a tutorial that shows you how to do it. I have a tutorial showing this piece of linen that I have not uploaded yet, but I will. I have to go, I have to watch it actually, make sure it's okay. What happened was I was dyeing linen and I tried to make this piece together tutorial with different pieces of linen and it turned out that for whatever reason, the different segments were filmed in different uh, ways. So that was a little annoying, meaning, meaning different formats, excuse me, so I couldn't combine them. Anyway, I'll be posting some pieces so you can see. I have a brand new tutorial that is going to be up already. And the reason I did this tutorial has to do with this chart. Now it is My Dear Hearts, I, of course, Blackbird, and I did not buy it for this chart, although it is awesome, so I may end up doing it. I bought it for this. You can see that. This is called the Sweetheart Pin Cushion. Uh, I did not pull it out. Let me go get the piece I'm gonna do this on. Okay, here I am back. Um, this is a 1909 uh, it is, it's actually signed by Jesse, 1909. It, it contains some sterling silver items. I do have the scissors from here, and I do have the thimble, and I, I do have the items that went in here. The, there was a little pin cushion in the shape of a, of a uh, strawberry that was really messed up. So I, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But anyway, I bought this for the box and the scissors. They were sterling, beautiful scissors. So this has to go on here. I originally was going to do it on North Pole Linen by Dames of the Needle. I thought it was 40 count, but it turns out it's 30 count, which would have made the pattern too big for the box. I did a calculation and I found out that on 40 count, it will fit almost exactly on the box. It'll go right to the edge, but it's gonna look fine. So then I was stuck not having any red linen. 
Of course, I had Sweeney Red, which is another Dames of the Linen, Dames of the Needle, awesome, uh, beautiful fabric, and it was in 40 count, and I sold it. So I do buy and sell some linen on my site because I collect linen when I find unusual colors and so forth. I'll, I'll buy it, and then if I don't end up using it and don't have a project for it, I'll resell it. And that's on, on my Facebook uh, group page. But, um, so anyway, I, I was stuck with this dilemma. So what I did was I dyed my own linen with cherry and wine. And there is a tutorial up to make this linen. And I think it came out awesome. Cherry wine linen. Now, the call for threads are, what is it, here it is, Fawn, uh, Weeks Dye Works, Fawn and Sandcastle, and I have those, and I looked at it, and I didn't like the way it looked. So I am going to use what I had, which I went through my box, and I found some oak, Weeks Dye Works oak, and some crescent colors hazelnut. So let's imagine this done in this. Will it work? Yeah, I think it will because it picks up some of this burnt color. This isn't coffee. This is just from the oven where it gets a little crispy. I suppose if you dye the linen and don't oven dry it, you won't get that effect, but I like that effect. This looks like old grungy linen. So this is my newest venture. I'm going to start this. It does not look like it's a very big chart. Just to let you know, the original, uh, what it was called for was 36 Count Tango, but I picture this plus. I don't have it, but I've seen it. It's really a pretty linen. Uh, it's not quite red. It's, it is reddish, and it's, it's very beautiful. Um, so this will be done by the end of the week, because I'm on a mission to finish this. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I have only one piece of new fabric to show you. It is hand dyed by Stephanie. Hand dyed by Stephanie is awesome fabric. It's beautiful and it's really not too soft. It's soft, but it's not too soft like Weeks Dye Work Fabrics is. And it's very easy. And this one's called Chocolate Milk, just to show it to you. It's sort of grungy. Um, I don't know if it shows up pink in there, but there is no pink. There's tan and gray, and I really like it. So many of you have never seen all the colors in real life, and my and the pictures online when you go to buy fabric don't really do the fabric justice. In fact, sometimes they don't look anything like the fabric. So I'm going to try to show you as many as possible. So if you see something that catches your eye, you can you can go for it. All right, so let's go on to more finds. I found this box, Art Deco box. This is really old. It's old. Isn't this gonna look awesome with a pin cushion on top and your needle goodies in here? This will be a kit. I mean, look how well this was made. My only issue with this box is one of the hinges is sort of messed up. It looks like they took a little nail. Is it loose? A little bit loose, tiny bit. It doesn't detract, really. And it is very Art Deco. And this box has to be very old. Um, can I get some of these scratches out by sanding? Absolutely. You can sand this and re-put a finish. Will I leave it as is? Grungy for somebody else to work with, maybe. I think a fabric like this, no. I always have to find the right fabric. Uh, I will probably sell this with a full eighth of fabric and some goodies and whatever. I, I really want to see what people do. I've sold a bunch of these kits. Not because I make money on these kits. I really don't. If I make money, maybe it's $5. I mean, nothing extravagant. Uh, it's that I want people to make these things and share them on our page. I had this idea. 
of having this group. It is sort of growing. We're, we were up to 500 members. I checked this morning, we lost three members, so we're down to 497. I almost cried, but you know, uh, it's, uh, I got to get more people to post on the page. Uh, I'm the only one that posts. I post a lot of cool stuff and there's a lot of commentary and I do sell stuff and some other people sell stuff, but I got to get more people involved. But anyway, I don't think for a month old page to have 500 people or close to it now is a problem. That's the box. This is the dish. It's blue. This will make a beautiful pin cushion with the right fabric. Once again, I'm going to try to sell these with a full eighth of fabric because I think people could use the rest of it for ornaments or whatever. I think they'll feel like they're getting a bigger bargain that way. So, very pretty, this blue one. It, it, it's definitely vintage. The new ones they make like this have like a film on them, just to let you know. A film. So that they're clear glass with a cheap film. The, and if you put it in the dishwasher, the film begins to come off. If you put these in the dishwasher, these are blue glass through and through, it does not come off. Just a helpful hint. Let me take a sip of my Sunday coffee just to let you know. Um, so that is a hint about what is vintage and what's not. Look at the quality of the piece. Look at the, you know, maybe some of the, see how there's some ridges there. That, that show, sort of shows me that maybe they actually took a little bit of effort and time. So I don't know how old this is. Do I think it's antique, meaning over 100 years old? It certainly could be. It probably is not. It's probably, it is definitely vintage, meaning it's, it's got to be anywhere from 99 years old to, let's say, 10, 20 years old. More likely, if I had to guess, this was 1950s, 60s, 70s, which is mid-century modern. MCM, if you see that. I found this. I love these little vintage containers. I had a Christmas one that I filled with goodies. This one's an Easter one. Probably, and it's made, it says Inesco. Inesco Hong Kong. Probably made in the 80s. Probably. The inside is almost pristine. going to make a great little needle box for the holidays and it's got rabbits cool looking rabbits and I just love the little handles so this will be a kit one day probably next year because it's not quite the time for this and finally this is old this is a vintage bathtub um, I have soap in it right now my daughter gave me this soap so <laughs> I'm using it as a soap dish, but when the soap's gone, this is going to make something very cool. This is definitely not new. I've seen new ones, and they don't, they don't look nearly as good as this. It's got gold feet. It's got little flowers on it, decals. It's just so cute, and I think that's going to make a really cool little thing. Am I done? No. So here's a little box I found. This is great. This is great. This is an old one. It's dovetailed. It's dovetailed. It's old. You can make little kit. You can make little, you have to find the right motifs, but put a bunch of motifs in here and this is going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Found this. Um, let me show you the one just to let you know. when I'm not prepared. I really hate it. And I end up walking away, but it is what it is. I just want to show you one that I recently bought. I recently bought this. This is made by Lone Elm Lane. It was supposed to be a, a drawer, so it's supposed to sit like that. And it smells <laughs> really varnishy. This was over $100. This was easily over $100 because she makes everything by hand. And this came with a chart. 
Isn't that nice? So this came with a chart that's got everything you need to make this, uh, excuse me, all the patterns. And I bought this. This is a Nashville 2019 item. This was actually $121. And this chart was $12.50. So I got about $130 without anything into this. This is going to be a lot less. <laughs> when I sell this with a, probably with an eighth, it's probably going to be $25, including the fabric. I'm not going to give you a pattern because I'm not a pattern designer and um, I'd have to sell patterns and I, I don't really have patterns to sell. I could buy them and then sell them, but I think people can figure out and find patterns to put in here. But this is pretty. I can't wait to start this. I actually have this aside because I have not, um, I have to find the right fabric for this. What is the called for fabric out of curiosity? I haven't even looked at this. Let's see. Called for fabric is cocoa by Lakeside Linens, 30 counts. Um, that's for one of them. I don't, I think there's more than one. Hmm. It says cocoa by Lakeside Linens. No, it, it says it's the same, but it's not the same because don't they look different? That one looks darker. I think I'm going to do this on, since it really should be 30 count. The reason it should be 30 count is because it calls for 30 count and you want these to fit inside perfectly. I have a lot of R&R &R 30 count, so I think I'm going to use three different colors of R&R &R 30 count to make this work. And I could probably finish this myself, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, this is really pretty. I always forgot to show this to you. Another find. This is a frame that we're going to mount a piece on. Any of the Lone Elm Lane um, patterns can be are made to fit round, round items. I have one that's finished. I don't have it on my. Yeah, I do have it on my video. You can see the finish of a Lone Elm Lane uh, round. It's made to go on a shaker box. The actual finished on the box on the cross stitch covered video, it is at the cross stitch covered because it's going to be in the, uh, I'm going to enter it in the contest. But anyway, um, this is going to be, this is, I think this was a cutting board. I don't know. It doesn't really have a lot of scratches in it. So I don't think anybody used it. I think it's just lovely. It does have some feet, which may make it harder to hang. Um, no, you actually could put a, uh, a wire between here and here, so I think it's fine. And this is gonna be for a lone elm lane round pattern. If I do sell this, I will sell this with the appropriate pattern to fit on here and a big enough piece of fabric that you can finish this. This will be a, probably a complete kit if I sell it. I would love to see, if I don't have time to do this, I'd love to see somebody else do it. Um, I am not ready to do that yet. Let's see what else we have. Aha! You can find these all day long. These were made in the 70s and 60s. They were very popular. Again, somebody turned this. When I'm saying turned, they put it on a lathe and they hollowed out a tree because that's real bark. What kind of tree this is? This looks like a maple tree, just by the shaggy bark. I think it's maple. If anybody can disagree with me and let me know, that's fine, but you, you, you know, uh, let me know. I wanna know, but I think this is maple. Then they add this little thing on. What am I gonna do with this? Well, I just, I just pulled out a scissor. Where did I put my scissor? Hmm, I hate losing stuff. Anyway, oh, it's right in front of me. Um, you can put your scissors in here. There's two big ones, there's two small ones. I'm gonna hollow these out a little bit more. These can be hollowed out so that they're long. It's just, uh, they feel, it's got a little glue in there, but it's gonna be easy to hollow out and have an area for all your scissors and whatnot. That is a superbly cool item. Everybody knows what this was used for? Yeah, it was used for a nut bowl because you put your big prong, your big nutcracker in here and they used to have these little like 
like sticks, like long metal pieces, I guess, to get the nuts out of the shell. I don't know. Um, I do have another, we do eat nuts here, <laughs> especially around the holidays, but I'm not gonna use this as a nut ball. I'm gonna use this for scissors and whatnot. It's gonna sit on my table. What else is there? One more. You're gonna like this. This was incredibly inexpensive for what it was. It is from, it is an Art Deco, probably from the 1940s, if I had to guess, because I tried to look this up through Oneida. Um, I believe this is Oneida. Yeah, it is made by Oneida. It was made in the US. This was made for, I have this in here for a reason. This was made for silverware, but look what you can do with it. You can put all your scissors, they will be very secure in there. So you can put your entire scissors here, you can put your pins in here, you can put whatever you want here, and there's a drawer. Um, this is gonna hold a lot of stuff. I'm always looking, just to show you my scissors, I'm always looking for things to, to store needlework supplies in because I have them in like plastic boxes. How much nicer is it gonna to be to store it in this case? If you had to buy a case like this today, this case would be in the hundreds of dollars. They do sell these fancy cases for silverware. They're not nearly as nice. They're usually made in places that are overseas. This is made in America. It is made beautifully. Um, you easily could tear this out if you wanted to. I think it's kind of cool because it can hold some thread maybe and something in place. Look for these. You can find these. This won't be sold because it's way too heavy. I mean, it's solidly heavy. And, but you guys can find these. And for a very inexpensive price, you can have Um, that one I'm going to tell you I found at a thrift store and I'm going to tell you what I paid for it, that particular piece, because it was the bargain of all bargains. I paid $5 for that, $5 at a thrift store. Um, I don't know if I'll ever see one again. It's worth, I looked on eBay, uh, one like that is worth about $40 plus the shipping was like 50, so it's close to a hundred. But you can go to thrift stores or tag sales or garage sales or secondhand stores. Um, at the antique show, they sell those left and right filled with silverware, uh, usually silver plate silverware. And they're left, they have them all day. And, you know, even if you spend $50, $60 on something like that, they're fabulous. That has some scratches. I am going to sand it and re-stain it, I believe, so it looks pristine because I like to keep that out as a, as a, as a nice piece. I gotta look up uh, some tutorials how to sand and stain. I, I know how to do it, I'm imperfect. My husband does it all the time, so I, if I recruit him, it might be done in five years. Uh, well, he's too busy working on other stuff. So anyway, so that's my vintage finds for the week. I'm going to show you a finish that I made in 2014 off a kit. This is stamped cross stitch. I haven't framed it yet. I think I'm going to. Um, I might bring it to the cross stitch cover. They'll laugh at me and say, why are you going to frame that? <laughs> but why not? Um, this is God grant me the serenity, which of course is a famous saying, but I made some of the, I made this in a, uh, it looked like a tree and it was a family tree. I made it for my brother and I got to tell you, it came out awesome. He has it in his living room as a showpiece, his family tree. And, uh, you can find some of these kits very inexpensively on eBay at Etsy. Don't look for them locally because you probably won't find them, but you may find, I mean, somebody may have a lot of them. But eBay and Etsy is where to find these kits. They're inexpensive and there's something different 
I think they're kind of cool. But that's the intro to showing you all of this stuff. So, um, oh, I have one or two things more to show you. I forgot about this. I'm going to show you this piece of fabric I bought. Now, it's a, it's a, it's, this is almost a shame to cut up, but look at this fabric. This long piece of fabric. It's magnificent. It's painted. And this could make a long pillow. It, it, it's going to do something with it uh, because it's really so pretty. I'm never going to use this as a as a half apron. I love aprons, but half aprons don't do it for me. I need the full bib apron when I work because otherwise I get stuff on my shirt. I, I just can't stand the half ones. So this piece of fabric is going to be something else. It will be repurposed. This is pristine. This apron was never used. I can tell you that. And what a find. Like I said, the vintage fabrics, you, you never find this at Joanne's. You just wouldn't find this quality and this painting and the gold, it's got gold on it. I mean, just magnificent. And one more thing just to show you. Vintage wallpaper, vintage wrapping paper. This is Candyland wrapping paper. Candyland, remember the game? I looked for this wrapping paper and I couldn't find it anywhere and I did find this at um, one of those second-hand stores. It wasn't a thrift store, it was more of people buy and sell. And um, I had to have it. it. Wasn't expensive, it's a huge roll. How cool when wrapping your gifts to wrap them with Candyland paper. You also can use this kind of paper as a, um, you can wrap your uh, foam board in it and then mount your pieces on another piece of foam, bo foam board. I'd like to do that as a tutorial, actually. I've done that before, and I gave it away. I don't have them, I've given them as gifts. And a lot of the Christmas I gave as gifts, but those kind of pieces, I, <laughs> the ornaments I have. But be on the lookout. Okay, now finally, let's look at the kits. Some of these are contemporary and some of these aren't, but we're going to have fun. Hirschner's Christmas wet, uh, Red Work Pillowcases. Look how many there are. You can't really, there's no color picture, which annoys me to no end, but I saw these done on their website and they're beautiful. They're, as you can see, stamped. Easy peasy to do, mindless, seriously. You stamp them, you stamp, you do your X's, try to do them all in one, in one, uh, going one way, actually to do a line at a time, just like any, anything else, you want them nice and neat. And then wash this in cold water, and uh, all of the all of the this stuff will come off, so you won't see any of that. And these will look great on your bed. Will I get to these one day? I hope so. I have so much to do, but these are just so nice. I got these on sale at Hirschner's. Contemporary, I believe they still sell them. Aha! The box. This box are ornaments, ornament kits. There's a place called Lee Ward's. Lee Ward's was a Hobby Lobby type store that sold uh, all kinds of craft. I have some old Lee Ward's. I have to find them. I'm going to show them uh, on a, I'm going to show them on a future video, but they're actually from the 1960s. They're the Lee Ward's home catalogs. And they have all of these items in there in the catalog, and I bought it so I could see what they had and then maybe look for ones I didn't have already. I have made probably 30 or 40 of these easily, and they're, they're all packed away from my tree. Come Christmas, I'll make a video. If I'm still making videos, I'll make a video and show you all my ornaments. But I'm just gonna show you these. 
you, uh, most of you, the majority of you, have probably never seen these kits. They are available on eBay and Etsy. Some of them are. There's an awful lot of people that, that do likes these, and they do sell quickly when, they find, when you find them for a good price. I highly suggest that anybody that does cross-stitch tries a kit. You will be hooked. They're sort of, I'm not going to say they're mindless, but they're easy. They're easy to do. I wouldn't bring them on a plane or anything because you do need to have good light and you do need, to, you know, you don't want anything moving. But you certainly could um, sit on the couch and do this on an on a evening. One of these you can probably do in one night. It takes a few hours each one, if not one, two nights. It, it takes some time. So I'm just gonna go through some of these. This one's called Candle Glow. Can you see that? This one is called Rainbow Sparkler. This one is called, why is this in a, I don't know, Christmas Bell, maybe had a leak in it. This one is not Lee Ward's. This is Dexter's. Dexter's was another store that no longer is here that made these beautiful balls. And I can't show you how nice this one is, but they come out really beautiful if you can just see the colors. Uh, this one is, so we have Lee Ward's, Dexter's. This one is, I have no idea. TNL Crafts, once again, does not exist. This, believe it or not, is from Pompano Beach, made in Pompano Beach. Cute bells, right? Well, there were a number of companies that made these. This is from Hirschner's. This is not a contemporary Hirschner's. This is an old Hirschner's. You want the better kits are the old ones. The new ones are made in China. The quality is not there. I have, I had the the ornament of the month. I was doing the ornament of the month and I got disappointed because the, they just were sort of cheap. They didn't hold together well. You, you, anyway, like everything else, quality is better. The old ones were made in the US. So this is an older Hirschner's. This is a panorama one made by Lee Wartz. I love the panorama ones. They actually come out the best. They're done, they're amazing. The pictures look good. They don't even do them justice. This one is a company that is still in, in it's still making these kits. It's called Cracker Box. They make limited edition kits. I will tell you that these are highly sought after, just like Blackbird Designs. They make them and they're gone and people collect them. This one is Snowflake. There's no picture. Um, this is a sculpture crochet kit. I'm not even gonna show you that because that's, that's not something I'm gonna do. It probably came, who knows. This is a Lee Ward Santa boutique kit, another one of the panorama kits. This one is a Lee Ward snowman, not quite as elaborate, but they're cute nonetheless. This one's a Lee uh, Walco. Walco was um, a subs subsidiary of Woolworth. And they're no longer here, neither is Woolworth. But again, these look very much like the Lee Ward's kits, which leads me to believe that the same company made them for both. Anyway, this is 1977, just to let you know. All of them are made in the US. This one's made in the Bronx. Pine cones. So we've gone over a few different brands. Uh, another Walco. This one is called Pink Radiance. There's a sticker on here, but you can't see the pink. Well, I can't show it to you, but anyway, it's got a pink ball. It's got a big sticker on it. Lee Ward's Boutique Ornament Praying Angel. This 
Lee uh, Walco. This is um, this is called nothing. It's Santa, <laughs> and this is Santa. He's got a sort of a creepy face, but these are really cool when they're done. This is Lee Ward's. This is here comes Santa on a sleigh. Now, you can use these with just the pins, and the pins will hold pretty well. If you really want one like this, you have to glue together a little bit. And if you really want to do these with care, you actually glue the pin in before you do it. You stick the glue, the pin in the glue, and you put it in. I've done them with and without. It definitely is more secure with. Um, this one, again, another sticker. I can't show you. Uh, this one is another Lee Wards. It's called Oriental Braid. This one's another Cracker Box. Uh, I can't show you, but you get the idea. Look how elaborate that one's going to be. I can't show you because there's no pictures. Oh, don't worry, we're almost done. This one is made by what company? This was made by Michaels. Michaels, which is obviously still made by Sulin, which I believe is no longer in business. They were an American company. And uh, this was made by Michaels back when Michaels had these. So these are three little Christmas trees. Just to give you a price, this was $6.99 when Michaels first had this made in the USA. Um, nowadays, the if you were to buy this on eBay, this would probably be about 15 bucks, I think, which isn't that bad. Maybe. Uh, this one is Candy Cane House Boutique Kit. Lee Wards. This one is Swiss Clocks. I have made one similar to this. This one is Christmas bells, but it's not, you can't see a picture, so. Um, this one is, who made this? It doesn't say, but again, you can imagine what this looks like. Look at all the beads. Uh, okay. As many of these are in this pile, I've made more, okay? And just to let you know, this is a contemporary ornament of the month club. They look good. And it comes with a lot of stuff. These Hirschner's ornament of the month club actually come with a ton of stuff. The quality is not there. But if you just want to, I made one of these, just to let you know. This was a ornament of the month club. And uh, I did make one of these. And uh, it sort of fell apart. That's why I'm saying the quality's not there. These, the old ones, are the way to go. So I suggest you try one for fun or not. The companies to look for are Cracker Box, Walco, Lee Wards, and uh, there's a, a Sulin. Sulin. And that, I think that's about it. I don't know if I mentioned something else. I'm just going through these. But Lee Ward's was, uh, must have been amazing in its day because they have great stuff. And old Hirschners. I forgot about that. Old Hirschners. Not contemporary ones, old ones. Okay, so that's one box. That's a box of ornaments yet to do. I will do these one day because I do them in between. Another box of some kits. Oh, one more. I made one of these. This comes in a box. It's a music box. It comes with everything sort of raw. So this comes with your music box, all your pieces, all your felt, and with glue and pins you make this. These come out awesome. I made one. This is my second box. These are really hard to find. I mean, this went for $20 back in the day. This was made in Japan. It was not made in the US, but probably in the 70s. $20 back in the 70s was good. Just to let you know, these kits are $70 or $80 on eBay. I haven't looked recently because I, I'm not buying anymore because I have tons of them. And also, every single one I've made does not look like those. There's, 
probably hundreds of designs. So I've made some and I did not buy duplicates and those are ones that I don't have made. Music boxes. Let's go through some of these kits. Dimensions, of course, is still in business, last I heard. These are little birds. This one is called, oh, I don't know, bird something. Birds from Hallmark Cards, that's what it's called. And this one came with, as you can see, that paper. Just like Mill Hill comes with paper. These are gonna come out real nice. I'm sure most of you have never seen these. This one is a Cruel kit. I have made Cruel. Cruel was very popular in the 60s and 70s. I've made some of these. Not from this kit, but they come out really cute. A Cruel ornament kit. I really like that. This one is a Cruel uh, Christmas wreath. Um, it's really, it's embroidery and it's, it, it's felt. It's a felted kit. As you can see, it comes with all this stuff. Um, this has a price on it, which is interesting. I did not pay that price. <laughs> I actually bought this on eBay. These felted ones come out really pretty. I'm telling you, you've never seen this. I can tell you that. I mean, if you have, then it means you're a little older. Who knows? Um, this is a Paragon. I can show you what these kits come with. They come with everything you need. They even come with a needle, which I don't suggest you use. Because the needle, um, they're usually, sometimes are rusty <laughs> over age. But anyway, it comes with everything you need to make these little ornaments. And I have gazillions of ornaments made. Here's another one. This is a Lee Ward's kit. This is a Creative Circle kit. Creative Circle was around for a long time. Um, they were they they made these kits and i think they all were mail order i think you joined a club if anybody could give me information about creative circle let me know but they have quite a few kits out there 2176 these are um like a almost like a rug thick yarn Ugh, i'm going to get all these to show you Another Creative Circle one, the same thing. Um, this one is, oh, felt. It's going to be this top one. All the pieces of felt, you cut, a, you cut, you sew them by hand, you applique them, you put your little um, sequins on them. They're so easy, and they make great gifts. I've given quite a few away. This one is Busilla, which, of course, is still existence, but the, the kits they make nowadays are not made in the USA like these are. And these are really nice little felted birds. Comes with everything you need. This kit I can't show you because there's no cover. Uh, this one is Paragon. Once again, felt. This one's open, which means I might, no, I don't know why it's open, but it says this one's made by Paragon again. Mr. and Mrs. Santa are awfully cute. Here's a cross stitch one. This is cross stitch and felt, so it comes with Ada, it comes with the felt and the, the ruffle. This looks a little 80s. They're still very pretty when you make them. Another paragon with bells. This one's a real old one. This one's an old Busilla. There's no date on it, but it does says made and printed in the USA and made in the USA. What does that tell you? And these are little door hangers. Oh, I'm gonna have to put all this away. Um, I will show you a contemporary one. I made these. As you can see, they're already cut up. So what I do, just to let you know, is I'll cut the pieces out so that they sort of, the little pieces are, they still have more to cut out, but they're individual. I'll bag them together for each, each individual ornament, because usually this makes six or seven ornaments at least. And um, then I'll first sew the sequins on, then cut around the little lines after I sew the sequins on, and then attach them all together. I have a system. I made a few of these bears already. 
This is contemporary. These are, you can still buy these. These came out so cute. Anyway, these Busilla, um, it says 2007, but I bought these not that, I didn't buy these that long ago. I don't know where they're made, it doesn't say, but these actually are still made in the USA. They were still made in the USA, maybe just a little longer, but these are relatively contemporary. I'm pretty sure you can still buy these, but they came out great, these little bears. I already made some. This is one by, again, Paragon, and these are 3D ornaments. Look how cute. Let's go more. These are made by, oh, Busilla, little stockings. I believe I made some of these already. In fact, I know I did. I made one of them. Um, this is, who knows, it's still open. These are some contemporary ones. I'm going to keep those to the end. This is a, this is Cruel. Cruel is, uh, just embroidery with wool. That's all. And uh, these make little birds. Another Cruel one. This is by Astor Place. They're no longer in business. But these actually come out very pretty. You, uh, embroider this fabric uh, and uh, cut them out and sew them together no no time um i have one more box let me get hold on because i also have some contemporary ones i wanted to show you um this is jiffy stitchery jiffy stitchery is no longer in business easy 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 to make little cool kit. This is actually, uh, I just bought this for the uh, pattern. These are called sledding, sledding cats and they're, uh, I bought it just for the pattern by the way. That is a cross stitch pattern. I thought this was awfully cute. There's somebody put that on there. It must have been cut out from the catalog. I believe this is Hirschner's. But um, I did buy this on eBay as a, a very adorable pattern. I don't know why it's in here. I gotta take this out. It doesn't belong in this kit box. This belongs in my pattern area. Keep that out. Um, is there anything else in here I need to show you? Oh, another one of these. This, look at this clock. A different style of clock. A Lee Ward's, Lee Ward's a Walco. Lee Ward's. This was made in Japan, some made in the U.S., and this is 1978. I have to... What a mess I'm making. Um, this is some of those Ornament of the Month Club ones. I'm just showing you. These are all contemporary. The quality's not there, but if you want to start off with something. Here's one more. Walco Christmas Tree Ornament from the 60s. Look how... This is going to be really cool. Got red, it's got blue, and I don't know why that one shows red, because it's got royal and green. It shows red. I made one like this, and it came out awesome. Um, I'm just looking to see if there any more. Look at the birds. Uh, somebody did that. Another Lee Ward's kit. Nope, Waco. I told you it's the same company. Makes them. And finally... This one's open. It's going to be hard to see, but just to let you know. This was a big kit. It made three. I'm just looking to see if there's any more. Um, some of these are open. Oh, this one. I bought this and never did it uh, because it, it's more than I bargained for. This is so called Swedish embroidery. I don't think there's a photo, but just to let you know. Um, you can only imagine how pretty that's going to be. And this... Is. Oh, I did start it. I did start it. Is um, some sort of embroidery. I think I stopped it because I thought it didn't look right. I guess if the whole thing is done. Um, yeah, I bought this. It, it, it was supposed to be a table runner. Maybe I have to learn how to do embroidery a little bit better. This was made by Swedish Handicraft. And it's linen. So it smells a little old. It's linen. Um, 
Maybe one day I'll restart that. Uh, just to show you, these are contemporary kits. These you can buy. Uh, this is Busilla. This is 2011. They still sell these though. And this says made in China. So you're still getting a lot for your money here. You get a lot of these. And this makes an unbelievably nice wreath. I don't like the made in China, but according, but this looks okay. This looks okay. So, all the felt, all the sequins, all the, the floss ready to go. And this, this probably would take you a few weeks to make, but imagine you had a felt item like this on your door. It would look awesome. But I wanted to show you contemporary as well. This is also contemporary Jan Lin. This is 2005, and I know these are still available, although it does say made in the U.S. Red work. Don't know why I bought this, um, other than I wanted to try red work, but it's awfully, you know it's going to be pretty. Finally, I wanted to show you these. I made one. Uh, I made, uh, it was a little, um, let me get it, hold on. I hate it when I'm not, oh my goodness gracious, I gotta find you, I'm coming back. <laughs> I made this. This was from Just Cross Stitch, their Halloween issue. I believe these were designed to go in these, but I actually use these, I keep this out all year. They're coasters. They, uh, you just mount your needlework inside. It comes with a sticky thing, and then you put, then you put the the uh, the cork on the back. But they're awesome, and um, they still sell these. I, I don't think you can get them. This says Michaels, but I'm pretty sure you cannot buy them at Michaels. You have to buy them online. Maybe I'm wrong. If anybody lets me know if they're sold them at Michaels, I don't know. But. Michael's has sort of moved away from needlework. That's the way it goes. But so this is another idea of how to finish. Um, you can find these all day online. It says made in the USA. Could you believe it? Ramco Arts. That's the company. Ramco Arts, made in the USA. It says paperweight coaster. They're not that heavy. <laughs> That's funny. This is the same one. This came from a, it's the same one, but. That's something to do. I don't know how long this video is. I also was going to show you some more uh, antique postcards, but I think we'll wait on that. And I think we're going to be done for today. Um, just to let you know, I'd like to see comments because it means people watch. I'm not going to make these videos if nobody wants to watch, although it is growing, so I'm relatively new to floss tube, and I, uh, I'm really, uh, I'm enjoying this because it gets me to go through my stuff too. <laughs> it gets me to say, "Wow, I forgot I had that," and it gets me to share my love of vintage, my love of uh, now, my love of dyeing fabric because this this fabric is fabulous. I might even, once I use half and sell half, maybe I'd like somebody else to make stuff on here. In fact, I like dyed fabric so, so much now that I may just uh, start doing stuff uh, mostly on my own fabric. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to be doing these and I hope people are watching. That's all I could say. And if you, please comment, let me know, and please ask questions if you have let's say an idea uh, about how to dye, a question about what to look for in a, in a certain vintage piece, if you could let me know. You also can find me on Facebook. You can message me. I'm more than willing to uh, answer you. I do work full time as a physician, so if, you, uh, if I don't answer you right away, it's because I'm at work or um, I take call too, so sometimes I go in after work. But, um, from my home to yours, keep stitching.